Hello again. Um, I'm Paul Beckwith and I'm continuing my discussions on catastrophic flooding um, that has most recently occurred in central Tennessee just a few days ago. Um, we had up to 17 inches of rainfall or 432 millimeters falling in uh, basically in a day and all that water uh, got concentrated into the rivers and over flooded um, river banks and uh, it was like a tidal wave surge coming in and it it just washed away houses and created utter, utter devastation and killed a lot of people. Um, uh, one, I just, you know, on, a, on, a, on an aside, I just, wa I watered this plant. It hadn't been watered for a while. I was a bit negligent and then I watered it. I gave it loads of water two days ago and after one day of watering, this first um, growth here occurred. And then after the second day of watering, the, uh, the second one occurred. Okay, so, you know, it's just, it's grown this much in two days after getting a lot of water. So I'm, con and, and that's not just this one uh, leaf here, one branch, it's, it's, it's everywhere. This one has two more, this one has two. There's even a couple I've noticed that have three. So, you know, like what is this? this is like a plant that's supercharged. Look at all, the, think of all the carbon that's being captured. We should grow this, this thing around the world and use it to capture huge amounts of carbon. But anyway, um, let me get back to the Tennessee, the catastrophic flooding. Okay, so this is a, in the Washington Post article. You know, at least 21 dead, 20 missing after catastrophic flooding in central Tennessee. And you can see a boat here. Um, there's a bridge um, at the end, and all of the debris is getting caught and stuck up on the bridge. You know, so here we go. See all this debris? It's in front of a bridge. You know, and here's a boat that's also joining. This looks like a shed or cabin, and like it's just utter, utter devastation. You know, and then there's some personal stories. You know, family of six woke Saturday to floods bursting into their new duplex. The water outside was up to their chest. Soon it tore them apart. It tore the duplex apart. This woman was swept to a tree. She clung for hours waiting to be rescued. Her partner tried to grab the four children, but a current pulled them away. Two of the children, thankfully, were um, fine. They resurfaced unscathed, but the seven-month-old twins never came up. You know, tr tragic. I mean, and, and this is just like, like literally it's like a tidal wave. I mean, I showed you the water uh, coming up in the last video in the space of about three or four hours. You know, if you look at the uh, river gauge here, um, where is the image? Right here. Okay, so this is the river rising, you know, from about four feet here to 32 feet, and that only took a few hours you know, three, four hours to rise that much. So it was like a huge tidal wave just coming in and sweeping everything away. Um, this is the estimated rainfall on, on, uh, from the 21st to the 22nd, uh, over 24 hours. And in these, this is the town of Waverly, Nashville is here. And in this red, reddish region, that's you know, 15, 16, you know, as, as high as 17 inches of rainfall fell in these, uh, you know, in, in these regions. And anything in the red region at all is over about 15 inches of rainfall in that 24 hours. And of course, it just went into the rivers and swept through the town. Um, you know, catastrophic rainfall. 17 inches in 24 hours, blowing through the state's nearly 14-inch record set in 1982. Um, and, you know, there's just all kinds of images. And this does talk about uh, climate change, the increase in extreme weather events around the country, stokes concerns that the changing climate is making natural disasters more frequent and intense. So the Northeast was pummeled by Tropical Storm Henri. Um, the West is battling wildfires, and I'll talk about wildfires in uh, videos soon because, uh, you know, all of these wildfires are putting huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
So, you know, when we get enough of the fires and, and uh, fails, failing of carbon sinks on the planet, then CO2 levels will skyrocket without us. Even if our emissions went to zero, CO2 levels will start to skyrocket if the, when the Earth starts putting out huge amounts of CO2. And then basically we're, in, we're, in, we're even in more dire straits. Uh, we have no choice for survival but to capture carbon, to take carbon out of the atmosphere and also to cool the planet with solar radiation management but giving us a bit of, uh, you know, as we try to protect the global food supply. Um, so, you know, it's just the, the, the weekend's rains in Tennessee were more reminiscent of a hurricane on the coast and a flash flood in central Tennessee. A thunderstorm kept hitting the same spot, so this idea of a train of storms, you know, just passing the same spot, you get a huge amount of rainfall in a short period of time, and of course you're going to get devastation. Okay, so the, this is a picture of the two twins, two seven-month-old children that uh, perished in this flood. You know, when the, the river came up so fast, people living close by had no chance to get out. It just happened too fast. It's tragic. Okay, so, you know, here's a trailer destroyed and a, uh, a, a, a mobile home and a truck trailer. We're being we're washed away by floodwaters. Went a far went a, a long distance and then we're deposited. The power of moving water is phenomenal. Water is so dense, you know. Um, imagine you know when you think of when you go to the beach and you try to you know you're playing in the you're running into the water. Okay, as you run into the water, the water resistance gets larger and larger and it basically stops you in your tracks. Well, now the water is actually moving and it's just carrying everything away. It's very dense and uh, it has tremendous power. You know, never drive into even, you know, into any running water, no matter how deep you think it may be. Um, yeah, there was th this, this uh, you know, there's all of these personal stories of people in, in Waverly, and, uh, you know, the flood happened so quick, no one was prepared. You know, they're used to small floodings in, in this place, but, you know, this, this flooding came up so fast, like a tidal wave, it made it look like an absolute war zone and, and displaced many people, killed many people, and washed away homes. I'm going to give a few more details on this flood from the New York Times, and then I'll talk a bit about the European floods that happened back in July, because that was, you know, there's, there's similar features. Um, a tidal wave of water and at least 21 deaths, uh, an area of rivers, creeks, and rolling woods had seen flooding before, but nothing approximating the torrent of water that overwhelmed rural communities on Saturday. So this is a grocery store in Waverly. You know, the water came up. How high did it come up? I mean, it's hard to tell. Maybe the rust was on the shelves before, but it certainly came up and covered, you know, these layers here um, in this store. Um, and, uh, you know, these, these, these people said they came within a foot of drowning. They thought, you know, the river just coming, come, came up and up and up. Um, it says the flood water vanished as quickly as it arrived. And we know that that's not true because we can go back to this image here and we can see this particular river rises very rapidly, took a day to fall. So rose in three or four hours, took a day to fall. You know, that doesn't seem to me like it's, uh, it went away as quickly as it arrived. Homes picked up off their piers and dropped across the street. Bridges and roads crumbled, cars mangled, chain link fences clogged with debris, evidence of when they were a dredge for a spontaneous river. And uh, yeah, so here's just some other images. You know, here's a, this is, is maybe a roof truss and part of a roof or something. You know, all kinds of stuff just washed into the rivers. And it talks about um, how the warming of the atmosphere is contributing to more frequent extreme weather events. A warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. Yes, 7% more moisture, causing more powerful rain. Um, people described it as a tidal wave. Um, the city of um, Waverly, which was hit the hardest, a lot of these images are from Waverly, is about 4,100 people or so. Everybody was caught off guard, you know, um, the, the community was cut off, roads were impassable even after the water had retreated, so it was tough for emergency vehicles to come in and give help. 
Um, there were warnings. Residents said there were warnings, official ones and text messages from friends and family alerting them to the possibility of flooding, but they didn't grasp the urgency of what was to come. They, or others did not have time to do anything but brace for it. It's out of the ordinary, right? People just, here's, here's, a, here's a, um, a bridge, uh, you know, the, the railing of a bridge and all of this debris that was washed against it. I think this is probably the same bridge that we saw earlier with the boat coming and, and washing into it. Um, so just, uh, you know, they're still searching for people and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a house here, you know, brick walls completely removed and smells like death, said Ms. Burns, describing the stench that assaulted her as soon as she stepped inside her house. Okay, uh, and it talks about, you know, personal stories of how people were affected. So, you know, how long will it be before these disasters happen and there's no money to rebuild? That's a question to think about. This is some images from Europe in July. So four days. This is July 20th. Um, okay, so just prior to that, over four or five days, there was huge amounts of rainfall in Europe. Beginning on July 13th, intense storms dropped as much as 15 centimeters of rain in 24 hours. So the Tennessee, uh, it was 17 centimeters, 15 cent 17 inches rather of rainfall in 24 hours. This is 15 centimeters divided by 2.54. That's roughly uh, six inches. So we had six inches in Europe causing this devastation and we had 17 inches in Tennessee. You know, many, many, you know, hundreds of people died in, in, in Europe. Okay, and uh, they're just not used to these stalled weather systems in Europe. Okay, so with the jet stream slowing and stalling the, the weather systems, uh, we're getting more, you know, the part, lo large parts of Europe are much more exposed to, the, to, to these type of weather events. So I just want to show a couple more things here. Um, this is, uh, there's a Wikipedia page on the 2021 European floods. Okay, uh, at least 230 people died in those floods, 184 in Germany, 42 in Belgium, two in Romania, one in Italy, and one in Austria. Okay, Aug July and August of this year saw many floods occurring at similar times, flooding in Turkey, China, India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, the US, and New Zealand. Okay, um, in Belgium, they said it was one, this was one of the greatest natural disasters the country has ever known. Okay, and then this is a emergency response map, which I, I've expanded here. And you can see Germany and Belgium and the Netherlands and the blue areas. You know, you can see the black of the rivers and the inundation of the areas is, it doesn't say what the uh, blue, I assume the blue is the amount of rainfall or amount of flooding. And you can see, you know, many, many countries being affected. Okay, so then it, you know, it talks about the effects in each country, so Austria, this is a uh, city, Pepinster in Belgium, and Croatia was hit, the Czech Republic, France, and here's Germany. The floods were the deadliest natural disaster in Germany since the North Sea flood of 1962. Um, and here's the river rising. Okay, this is the water level in one location in Germany and the water level in another location. And this is in centimeters, and this is the time frame of days. So this storm was continuous rain over a number of days, okay? Steady rain over a number of days versus the, uh, versus the catastrophe in Tennessee, which was a much shorter, a much higher spike. I mean, it went up in three to four hours as opposed to over days. And, uh, you know, you can just scroll through and read the effects on you know, many other places. And here, here's a satellite image. I just want to show you this. Uh, uh, actually, I want to show you this um, satellite image here. So this is uh, the rivers on one day, and this is what the, when it was flooded. So anybody living along those rivers got hammered in Germany by this flood. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye for now.